So this is just a quick demo to show how you can use vSphere high availability to protect um, the vCenter server um, in, a, in a management cluster. A lot of uh, people are under a misconception that um, you can't protect vCenter with HA because vCenter is required for HA, and that's, that's not true. Um, vCenter is required to configure HA, uh, but once you have HA configured, um, the hosts themselves take over uh, determining you know, what VMs are protected and also uh, determining when an uh, event has occurred that triggers an HA response. Um, so in the lab environment, I have a management cluster. Uh, lab ESX3 is uh, running my uh, vCenter in the PSC. Um, right now, HA is turned off. I'm just going to go here and enable HA in the cluster. Um, pretty simple. I'm not really doing any other um, configuration for HA. Um, other than I, I have uh, admission control disabled just because it's a lab uh, cluster. I'm kind of constrained for especially memory resources. So um, just to make sure that HA works, uh, I'm going to just leave that disabled. So we're going to just turn it on, and you'll see it um, configure vSphere HA on both of the ESXi hosts. Um, lab ESX3, uh, which is the one where I'm running uh, my vCenter components, so both the vCenter server and the platform service controller. And this is just going to take a couple of seconds uh, to complete and um, initialize the HA agent on each of those hosts. So now if we go back to the summary of the cluster and we look at um, let me just refresh it here. the vSphere availability here, you'll see that HA is um, enabled for host monitoring and that admission control is disabled. Now again, I have the vCenter and the platform service controller running on ESX3. Um, over here, um, I have a little script running that's just monitoring um, whether or not the PSC, the vCenter server, and the ESXi host are up. Um, here uh, is the um, ESXi4. Um, so this is where my workloads are going to restart uh, once I initiate an HA event. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go hard power down um, ESX3. Uh, we're just going to turn the power off on it. And we should pretty quickly see this go to failed. You'll see the PSC is down, the vCenter is down, and ESX3 is down. Um, if I reload the web client here, it'll actually not do anything. It'll just keep spinning um, because it's not able to contact the vCenter server anymore. So let's just watch what happens over here on um, ESXi4. So is what's going to happen is the um, HA agents that are running on the host are going to uh, on ESX4 is going to determine that, hey, there's been an HA event. Um, the VMs, ESX3 and the VMs that are running on that are no longer available. And as what will happen here is you'll see them come into inventory on ESX4. Um, and the PSC was already there. And in just a second, the vCenter server should show up as well. And then these will start powering on. Let me just reload the client here. So, I mean, this does take a minute. So, HA is not a um, High availability doesn't mean always on or fault tolerance. There is an outage. So uh, because the VMs were running on ESX3, um, they, go, they go down when ESX3 goes down. Um, then they get added to inventory in ESX4 through the um, HA workflows. Um, and then they begin powering on. And you'll see the PSC, the PSC is already powering on and in, in process of coming up. Um, and in just a second, the vCenter server um, will start powering on. And 
you know, it's not a whole lot that happens now um, other than the, the servers come back up and in just a few minutes you'll see that um, the PSC and the vCenter server both uh, come back online and are available. And you'll see now that the vCenter server has started to power up. I'm going to keep lab uh, ESX3 down uh, for the rest of the demo, but you'll see that um, the VCSA is uh, VC1, which is the vCenter, is coming back up, and so is the PSC. Um, you'll see over here in the, the script that we're not um, able to access it yet, and there's you know the web client um, timed out trying to connect to it. Um, and if we look here, you'll see that the vCenter is already answering on 443 now. So if we change this, um, and that's that's pretty common uh, until the service is initialized. Um, but now you'll see the PSC is also up and answering on 443. So if we just give this a couple of couple of seconds, half a minute, two minutes, it, uh, it'll come back and be um, available and then ready to, uh, to administer the environment. So um, just, to, just showing how vSphere HA can be used to protect and restart um, the vCenter server components. Uh, vCenter is not required for HA to work correctly. Um, it's required for the configuration of HA, but not to actually have um, HA uh, work and restart um, virtual machine workloads on a surviving host. Um, it's one of the primary reasons for uh, virtualizing vCenter other than like saving a um, Windows license and simplifying the configuration a bit. Um, if you virtualize the vCenter in a management cluster, uh, you're able to protect it with HA and that way you know if you have a uh, hardware failure within the cluster, um, HA is going to restart the vCenter server on another host. Just check and see if the vCenter server is actually answering yet. And there we go. Now it's going to take a little while longer, of course, for the uh, web client to initialize before we could get access. Um, but we know that the vCenter and the PSC is running on the surviving host and that we are. Uh, accessing the vCenter server now that it did go down and come back up. So that's the demo of protecting uh, vCenter with uh, vSphere HA. Um, it works. It works like um, it should. Um, so any questions, you know, just feel free to leave it in the comment or on uh, my blog at uh, www.vhersey.com. Thanks.